the acidity of alkynes. Now, in the last lesson, we just got done naming alkynes. We'll proceed on. This is the one physical property we really want to talk about that's unique to alkynes. And, and it turns out it's going to be relevant later on in the chapter. After this, we're just going to cover all the different chemical reactions that either make or use alkynes. And this acidity is going to be directly relevant to one of those. Now, this lesson's part of my new organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one or any of my future playlists, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. You'll be notified every time I release a new lesson. All right, so the acidity of alkynes, and we specifically want to talk about a terminal alkyne where the carbon-carbon triple bond comes at the end of a molecule. So it's this hydrogen here that's attached to an sp hybridized carbon that is going to be of relevance here. So we're not really going to address internal alkynes in this part. It's just the terminal alkynes that are going to have some relevance here. We learned back in the chapter on acid bases that a terminal alkyne has a pKa in the 25 to 26 range, and and so in this case that means it's actually not very acidic. So but it's significantly more acidic than an alkane or an alkene. So for an alkane, your acidity, you know, pKa is in the 50 range. For an alkene, your pKa is in the 44 range. So this at pKa of 26, much lower, makes it significantly more acidic than an alkane or alkene. But the truth is it's still way less acidic than say, like water, which is not a good acid. So it's not a great acid, but it's acidic enough that we can potentially deprotonate this. If you're gonna try and deprotonate a typical alkene or alkane, it's just really not gonna happen. But we do have a way to deprotonate an alkyne. So if we look, classic strong base you learned about in Gen Chem would have been like sodium hydroxide. So if we add sodium hydroxide to this, So I'll write NR here, you'll find that no reaction. It turns out it is not strong enough. So again, this is not the most acidic thing in the world. Again, much more so than an alkene or alkane, but not very acidic. And we can kind of see why here. If we kind of show this reaction here, you could be like plus hydroxide. And if you actually did form products here, you'd form the deprotonated alkyne, which will give a special name here in a little bit, and you'd form water. And so our acid on this side's got a pKa of 26, but water has got a pKa of like 15.4. And so we can see that the equilibrium here is gonna to lie towards the weaker acid and base. And a pKa of 26 is a much weaker acid than a pKa of 15.4. And that's why this is not gonna work. This thing is way less acidic than water. And the equilibrium lies so far back towards the products that again, essentially we just say that no reaction happens here. So if you're gonna to wanna to deprotonate a terminal alkyne, you're gonna to have to have a new strong base, new and improved, that's significantly stronger than sodium hydroxide. And fortunately we have one. And we referenced this back also in our chapter on acids and bases. And it turns out this new one here is sodium amide, NaNH2. This is an ionic compound. It's got a sodium that's a positive ion and then an amide anion. And it's this amide anion that is the super duper strong base here. And so notice having a negative charge on oxygen and hydroxide, not as basic as having a negative charge on the less electronegative nitrogen. So that's the key here. And so if we look at this reaction, we'll now effectively shift this equilibrium so far towards the products, it turns out, that this reaction effectively goes to completion. And we'll form this lovely conjugate base of our terminal alkyne. And he gets a name here. We call this an acetylide ion. Cool, we'll find out these acetylide ions are really good nucleophiles. They're great for SN2 reactions, which will be relevant towards the end of this chapter. Super helpful for synthesis purposes, as we'll see. All right, so why does this reaction work, whereas again, the top one did not? Well, again, if we kind of write in our other reactant here, it's really the amide ion. So we get that amide ion, and then your product over here would therefore be ammonia. So, and the key difference here is that ammonia has got a pKa, not a 15.4, but somewhere in the ballpark of like 37, 38. And so now all of a sudden, he's the weaker acid as compared to the terminal alkyne with a pKa of 26, and he's much higher pKa by a fair amount. And so the equilibrium is going to lie so far to the right that it effectively happens virtually 100%. So again, if you use sodium hydroxide, not going to cut it. If you use sodium amide, virtual 100% to completion. Now, one thing you should note here, I just wrote it as amide here, but again, the reagent's NaNH2. And so sometimes you'll see the product drawn in and they'll draw the counter sodium ion right here as well. I just wanna make sure you've seen it both ways, whether you draw include the sodium counter ion or not, 
Your acetylide ion is the result here, and that's the big take home. So again, you want to deprotonate a terminal alkyne. We've got a new and improved favorite strong base to carry this out. The old ones like sodium hydroxide, not going to work. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the best things you can do to promote the channel. And if you've got questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you are looking for practice problems on all kinds, if you're interested at all in my brand new uh, Organic Chemistry 1 rapid review, if you're studying for finals, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.